BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Wednesday, May 25th, wherever and however you're joining us, Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who likes his quarterbacks beefy and thick, Jerem Jordan. Huh? Uh, yesterday, uh, Robert Sala, New York Jets uh, head coach, called Zach Wilson thick and beefy, <laughs> but in a good way, that he had uh, gained a little weight. You know, Zach says he came in at like 222 or something, so there you go. Uh, apparently thick and beefy, kind of like thick and chunky. Yeah, I can't uh, help but think Campbell, of Campbell's Donovan thick and chunky. McNabb, yeah. Now it's Wilson's thick and beefy. Thick and beefy. <laughs> okay. You may as well be thick and beefy so you can maintain in a very physical sport, violent at the highest level of the NFL. In that division, you're playing outside in the cold and the rain and the snow and the sleet. Work. Apparently, Zach is 220 pounds. It's 222 thick and beefy. I don't think so, As a right? quarterback? At 6'2"? At 6'2"? No. It's not, I don't think it is. Uh, hey, his coach approves. It's like, is he thicker and beefier? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Zach Wilson, yes, is gaining weight, ready for more with the New York Jets. We, of course, are ready for more with BYU football. Is Jaron Hall thick and beefy? Maybe no. we should discuss that. No, he, he's, no. he's fast and agile, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't think Zach's <laughs> thick and beefy either. Yeah. What will Jaron Hall and BYU face all year in terms of the most difficult game? And, in fact, we're going to rank all 12 games from – easiest per se to most difficult Jeremy and I will give you our list Blaine Fowler is going to join us to add in his opinion on that conversation what's at the top of his list and should we be worried about some of these group of five teams or is it just power five automatically in the top five plus more West Coast Conference baseball honors for BYU as they open up tournament play today and that brings us to today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Baseball plays LMU tonight, opening round of the West Coast Conference Tournament. The Cougars won two of three last week in Provo against the Lions. Third game, they had already clinched the four. They rested the arm. So, kind of narrowed it in a little bit. Win in advance to the double elimination portion. Lose and the season's over. So, hey, win. Listen to the game tonight on BYU Radio and the BYU Radio app, 10 Eastern time. Yeah, had a few people like, oh, they just lost to LMU 17-7. to Are you worried? No. No, they threw all the bullpen. Absolutely. So just take it easy. I just mentioned those West Coast Conference baseball honors. Austin Deming, all WCC first team. Brock Watkins, Nate Daly, Cooper McKeon, and Jack Sterner awarded second team honors. Mitch McIntyre, Cy Nelson, Ozzie Pratt, Bryce Robison, and Ryan Sapiti honorable mentions. Colin Reuter and Ozzie Pratt named to the WCC all freshman team. Is there anybody that plays significant innings for BYU that wasn't awarded in some degree? Everybody gets one. Pro Football Focus ranks Fred Warner, heard of him, as the best linebacker in the NFL. PFF says Warner has had a transformative effect on the 49ers defense. He's still got it. Yes, he does. BYU men's golf in Scottsdale, Arizona, playing their practice round for the NCAA National Championship Tournament. Play starts Friday and runs through next Wednesday. The Cougars, however, don't play on Sunday. Wait, what? Why not? So they've got to play their first round alone on Thursday, which will count as the final round. Anyway, the NCAA is accommodating BYU. The Cougars last played in this NCAA championship round in the 2018-2019 season, so it's been a few years. Good to have them back at the highest level. Track and field begins competition in the Fayetteville Regional today, the preliminaries. Number nine men's team has 24 athletes and 14 events today, and tomorrow the women's team begins competition tomorrow and uh or excuse me friday and begins from there so good luck there's going to be a ton of athletes that qualify for nationals in uh oregon which would be awesome so good luck to everybody no rest for the champion elijah bryant who scored 13 points grabbed four rebounds and had four assists and a 15 point win for anadolu efes in the turkish league quarterfinal so you win euro league now you got to go win the turkish league not as not as exciting or meaningful not as challenging either you would think no, no, no. Like, yeah, the debate of winning is better to win the Champions League or win uh, Bundesliga. Uh, it's Champions, Champions League. League. Yeah. yeah. And congrats to former Cougar Calvin Whiting with the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby, who was on the MLR first 15 this week at inside center number 12. Best at his position in the whole league. 
for his performance against Austin in a 22-8 Utah Warriors win. Hey, we're five minutes in and rolling. That means it's time to rise and shout. Let's go to What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Oh, we're reaching late May, and that means it's time to break down the schedule in each and every way we can possibly think of for BYU football. We are nearing 100 days away, and after looking at the SP Plus projections and a ton of post-spring top 25 polls, we, as in Jerem and Spencer, have decided to rank the 2022 schedule, starting with the easiest game all the way down to the toughest. We will go in order with Jerem giving his team first. Then I will give mine at the number 12 spot. We will discuss these games and our ranking for each and every one of the BYU opponents. If one of us has a team ranked higher or in a different position, we will discuss that team when it is brought up in its higher ranking. You got that? Simple enough. Our easiest to toughest game rankings for the 2022 BYU football schedule go now. Jerem, lead us off at number ticking? 12. It feels like I feel pressure. Uh, <laughs> Utah Tech, we both agree. Yeah. Yes. FCS, next. No surprise. Okay. Second easiest game. I say South Florida based on the criteria we discussed yesterday. 3-18, and 18, uh, you know, last year. Well, you, you have them a little higher. So we'll discuss I'll it. I'll discuss actually. USF yeah. in just a moment. What do you have? East Carolina, East Carolina. in Provo at this. number 11. Okay. I like East Carolina there because of the home game for mm -hmm. BYU. Sure. Yeah, it's easy. At number 10. But but I say South Florida at number 10 because I think South Florida is worse than East Carolina. Um, so, I yeah. And, and I know it's Florida. I know it. But first game, BYU's not beat up. Like, we talked about it. Okay, reasons why this is number 11 for me. They're three and eighteen the last two years. Mm -hmm. Will they get better? I don't know. They could be the same. Um, they they are figuring out who the quarterback is. Granted, Jerry Bohannon came from Baylor. Mm -hmm. Jaron Hall is healthy and knows he's the guy going into this game. This isn't suddenly he's the guy after the Toledo game. Okay. You haven't played four power fives in a row, then Toledo. You're not all beat up. Be always ready to go. Be always experienced. Aaron Roderick's the OC. Like, all these things are reasons why BYU, that, to me, that's the easiest. But there's only one spot difference there, 10 11 Okay, yeah. So, to me, as simple as this sounds, yep. BYU traveling two time zones, playing in Florida against the USF team that returns 85% of a production of the of team. Of a crappy that went two team. And True. 85% True. of the crappy players are back. This is great news. But BYU has to travel <laughs> the two time zones and play against a USF team that I feel like will be better with Jerry Bohannon at quarterback. They will get four whole wins. <laughs> Two wins last year, four this year. That's enough for me to put USF at number That's 10. Enough, semantics, it's, it's almost the same, but it's Let's semantics get to the interesting at this point. Okay? Who cares about the, we spent a minute too long on this. Okay, number nine for you, Jerome. <laughs> number nine for me is Wyoming. Um, Wyoming, now, this is interesting because I don't think necessarily this is like an absolute gimme. I, BYU can't turn it over three times like it did against Boise State and expect to – dominate and win you know like yes um wyoming wyoming is a team that BYU should be the home certainly but uh they have quarterback issues their quarterback transferred out they sent out this weird tweet last year um <laughs> saying hey we need a quarterback it's like what don't you do that privately andrew peasley is the guy came over from utah state he was five of seven against Cougars. i say wyoming at nine i go at liberty mm -hmm. number nine and wyoming just above them at number eight Again, we're so close, yeah. but there are some yeah. differences here. No Malik Willis, which is great news. The only reason I go with Wyoming is a little bit tougher than Liberty is because it's a rivalry game. And it'll for, be for them. It'll be emotional for Wyoming. Not that, for BYU. that might kind of provoke them to play a little bit harder. Although those players scrappy. don't know or care about any kind of rivalry with BYU. Well, Wyoming. You know what I mean? Like like the administration will be like, This is a big deal. Yeah. And yep. BYU will be like, This is another game. Oh, by the way, we used to be in the same league as these guys. Because luckily, there's no no one's going to be naked in a in a barrel in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. <laughs> it probably would be in Laramie. Been to a couple games up there. Those are some of the worst days of my life. That place sucks. Jeez. Wyoming in Provo, number eight for me. Yeah. So we're flip flopping on Liberty. At Liberty. Wyoming. Yep. Long road trip. I feel you. No Malik Willis is great news. On on we go. Okay, number seven, Jerem. Utah State. Yep, I'm exactly the same as yeah. you. I, listen, Utah State won 11 games last year. Blake Anderson uh, had a tremendous first year. It's a home game. Oh, by the way, you just played Baylor and then Oregon. So you're coming off of two uh, tough games. That's why this is kind of higher on the list. Um, it this could, one will be emotional. It, it, absolutely. It could. And, and will Utah State be just ticked 
that BYU, BYU has took taken them off, them the, off schedule. the schedule. And, oh, by the way, that was the second best win last year for BYU against Utah State. Shocking, right? Because they finished ranked. They finished ranked. Utah State will overachieve once again. Even though they lost a ton of production, they returned 49% of the production from last year's Logan, all-time team in Logan. Logan Bonner was tremendous at quarterback. But got, Blake Anderson will get the most out of his team. Yep, Even sure. though they're number 92 in the SP+, Plus, they will overachieve. The last wagon wheel. Nice graphic. Number seven. Yeah, and it's an emotional game. Who knows when BYU and Utah State will play again after this year. The earliest it could be, yeah. we think, is like 2027. Will BYU play in Logan ever again? Probably not. And like, if they don't do, have it's to. probably like a two-for-one way down the line. Don't have to. Utah State's worst nightmare is that BYU doesn't need Utah State anymore. Okay, you we're through I mean? the top half of the and schedule. And that they run out of cows. Okay, we have given you our easiest games and then have been working up toward the top, the toughest. We are through six games. Now into the top six, Jerem. This is where it gets fun. Okay. You and I agree again at number six at, at Stanford. At Stanford, the Tanner McKee game. Similar to USC last year, you finish with a power five. That's tough just in and of itself. Unless you play Arizona, then it's pretty easy. Um, both teams will be banged up. Okay, so this will be interesting. Stanford is not the same Stanford that it's been, right? Clearly not. We not just like, took their fullback, too. <laughs> yes. Hey, and Houston. Christian McCaffrey and uh, company are not walking through that door. That's the good news. So, yeah, tough game. You always got to show up and play this game and win, but it's definitely number six. Yeah, what type of team is Stanford the final game of the year? Are they motivated at all? Like, did they have a good season? Like, Are they 4-8? and eight They stunk four? last year. They did beat Oregon, but, like, their transitive properties, they were better than Ohio State. And Utah by the sta- transitive properties. Sure. But the, that doesn't actually work in real life. The only thing that worries me here is if BYU faces a Stanford team that is battling for bowl eligibility. Maybe they're five and six. Only and it's like, motivation. We got to get into a bowl. You got to beat yes. BYU at home to B- get into a bowl game. Yes, I, I can see that. But it's going to be fun for BYU fans to just show up. And hopefully, BYU is playing for like a 10 win season or something. In the same way that BYU fans showed up at USC in a massive way, excited about absolutely, stuff. and and one of the nicknames of uh, Stanford Stadium is the library because it's so quiet. Their fans don't show up. I've been to a game there. It is ridiculous how bad they support that team. If I was Houston Hey Mooley, I'm surprised he stayed four years. <laughs> like Stanford's an amazing academic institution, football program in in disarray. I, I know, like on the surface, it feels strange. To not put Stanford in the top five, but right now is the Toby Gearhart playing running back? The state back? of that program is Andrew Luck there? Would suggest that Stanford belongs outside of the top five again. Yes, road is game, Bryce Love playing running back? Power five. No. It, that's good enough to get them at number six. But number five, Jerem, Group of Five representation. You and I agree once again. Boise State in at number five. Seven and five last year, but it's Boise. Freaking state. Hank okay? Bachmeyer is going to play his ninth Hank season. Bachmeyer is the greatest quarterback in the history of football, apparently. Uh, <laughs> BYU, he was the difference BYU last year, Jerem. Beat him. Hank made. They can't do it. Hank made BYU fumble twice. Oh my gosh, he's the greatest defensive player in Boise State history as well. Okay, BYU's one and five up there. The one win was with Zacharias F. Wilson, Tyler F. Algier. Like let. BYU can go up there and win this game, but it is always a tough game, regardless of how, like Taysom Hill didn't win up there. It's tough to win up there. No question. Winning on the blue is always difficult. I thought about, man, should Boise State be higher? But then you look at yeah, n- the four other no, power they, five no, teams. Shouldn't. You look at the four other power five teams BYU still has that we have not discussed. Like, ah, no, they're good at number five. I wonder if Boise State's going to be ticked about the Big 12 situation because they wanted to be in the Big 12. I would love for Boise They've State got to something be to prove. in the Big 12. Can totally. you that coaching staff and that yeah. team? Like, oh, BYU going to the Big 12, big dogs here. We've got a winning record against you overall, and we're going to take you to task on the blue turf once again. And you're like, the they Power 5 team? They will be ultra motivated. We're the Power 5. Yeah. I, I love this game, and I'm going to miss this game. Okay. Honestly. I don't want it in the, the Big 12 scenario anymore, but I've loved it Super in Independence. Fun. Loved it. Great series. Yeah. Okay, into the top four, and you and I differ yep. on three of the top four. Okay, okay. and it's two, three, four. At number four, who do you have? Baylor. I have Baylor, yeah. The Big returning Ch- Sugar Big Bowl champs. Big 12 champs. champs. Sugar Bowl champs. Is it even harder? What is Sugar Bowl? Utah did it. Lo- losing the starting quarterback, running back, top two receivers, top two safeties. They lose a ton, okay? Oh, by the way, it's this is the 83-84 thing for BYU. BYU lost in 83. 84 got revenge at home. Mm-hmm. That's what's going to happen from last year's game to this year's game. The Big 12 element's interesting. Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateos back in town. This is going to be a tough game, but I feel very confident about the home opener. 
that BYU shows up in a big way against Will Baylor. BYU and Baylor be a ranked matchup? Will yes. Baylor be ranked in the preseason? They have to, right? Yeah. Because they were number five in the final AP poll. Yes, absolutely. They'll be ranked. Even though they lose, but the, the confidence that that program has shown up. Listen, like, the, yes, BYU uh, and Baylor is going to be a huge game, and it's one of the biggest games of the year. I could see you saying this as high as two, as low as four. I'm buying Baylor's stock to be a little bit higher than number four, which is why I'm going with Arkansas at number four. I'm not sure what Arkansas really is. They came on strong late last season, and they play in the SEC, and I know that speaks volumes, right? Like, if you're a top or an upper tier, an upper half team in the SEC, that generally says Third a lot, in right? In the SEC West, nine and four. Okay. That's really nine, good. Nine yeah. win Arkansas team yeah. from a year ago. They are middle of the pack in terms of returning production. I know they lost some big boys up front. I wonder how well they'll be able to protect the quarterback. They're playing in Provo. So that's why I have them just a slot lower than you do. I have Arkansas at number four. It's a weird thing for an SEC team to come to Provo. This is tough. Like, Baylor's done it before. They know the deal. Arkansas has never been in Provo before. Second SEC team ever in Provo. Only Mississippi, Mississippi State. played twice here. That's Correct. it. So, that. Again, they, they lost some big boys up front. How well can they protect the quarterback midway point of the season? Will BYU be angry if they occur coming off a loss against Notre Dame just before this? Or are they riding the high? Or are they riding the high and then they fall into a little bit of a trap? Yeah. Arkansas is really interesting to me for all the reasons you mentioned. K.J. Jefferson was number five on that quarterback list, 24-7 sports, by the way. So he was a sophomore last year, 27 touchdowns. He's a run threat as well. They were ranked size eight. Like, Arkansas was was good, man. They returned the two starting running backs and Jefferson as a runner, okay? They pick off a ton of passes, 13 interceptions to only 16 touchdowns allowed. Like, good defense, but a lot of it is back. 26 in SP plus projection. Arkansas is going to be really good. I have them at two. Ooh. I have them at Woo! And a lot of that is SEC prestige, but all the answers I just gave you as well. Like, what if I told you Arkansas last year was better than A&M, LSU, Mississippi, you know what I mean? Well, like, LSU's Mississippi coach State, got rather. fired. That was historically bad after yes. they won the but like in a, in a given year, if you're better than LSU, you had a good year, even if LSU is bad. Like, they're LSU, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, it, that's going to be a tough game. And, oh, by the way, um, yeah, they're, they're coming west, and let's go, SEC and all deal. You've got Arkansas at number two. Wow, you're buying the Razorbacks. SEC! <laughs> SEC! Okay, I've got them at four. Yeah, I think that coming to Pro is going to be a tough task. And clearly, I am valuing BYU's home field advantage a lot in this. I feel like home right. field advantage this is matters not, a lot. This is not the BYU team that was young and lost to Northern Illinois in 2018 when Zach Wilson was a freshman. This is a very different group, right? You come to Provo, it's hard to win here. Okay. So, Jerem, who do you have at number three, then? You just revealed number two and four. Who's number three? I have Oregon. I at have, Oregon. I have the Ducks at Oregon. This is this is a tough road game. This is week three coming off Baylor. Maybe you win. Maybe it's high. Maybe you lose, and you're, you're frustrated. Ten and – like, we've been like – Oregon's not – wasn't even that good last year. Ten and four still. Seven and oh at home. Didn't lose a home game. Dan Lanning, new head coach, the – DC from that Georgia defense that was Bo considered Nix is perhaps the, truth. the greatest defense ever. Um, I've been to a game at Oregon. Like it's a good atmosphere. It's a fun one. I think Cougar fans will love that road trip. Tough place to play. The last time BYU played at Oregon, Ty Detmer was the quarterback in 1990, and My BYU par- lost. I lived in Portland. My parents didn't take me to that game. Ty Detmer's Heisman Trophy winning year was the last time BYU played at Autzen, and they lost to Bill Musgrave and the Oregon Ducks. Okay. Listen, three years Tough later. Tough place they, to play. Three years later, they went to the Rose. Got him at number three. Okay, so you have a number three. I have at Oregon at number two, and that's because of the road. Like, because I feel road. like I feel like the Pac-12 and the Pac-12 narrative. Like, Is it even hard to be the back, Pac-12? Like, I feel like that's going to play into it. You, <laughs> okay, motivation like, oh, every Pac-12 fan will be rooting so hard for Oregon to beat up on BYU. Like, so significantly. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're After hoping. everything that was said last year. Yeah. Uh, well, our video, you know, in April. <laughs> we'll There's some serious pressure. Yeah. And then, no surprise, you and I agree, yeah. at number one, yes. the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in the Shamrock Series at yep. the home of the Las Vegas Raiders, yep. Allegiant Stadium. The home of, you mean the home of the BYU Cougars? October 8th Cougars. in Vegas. No question. Yeah. Notre Dame no brings back a t- their seventh in the SP Plus projection. Now, I, I interviewed Rudy, like the Rudy, before the Arizona game last year. And I said, are you coming to the BYU-Notre Dame game here next year? 
And he goes, yeah, I'll be here. And I said, who are you rooting for? And he's like, eh, probably the boys in gold. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, it's Notre Dame. It's game five. BYU will have played its two biggest games prior to that, right? Baylor at Oregon in weeks two and three. You, you have uh, Utah State and Wyoming um, in the next two weeks. I can't remember if that slipped or not. But you, So hopefully BYU is, has dominated one of those. And now you go for the biggest game of the year, the biggest splash you can possibly make. And it's actually Texas A&M Alabama game day, which kind of stinks. But if BYU is somehow undefeated going to that game, and so is Watch Notre out. Dame, woo, top 10 matchup. Let's go. All right. I've got a significant advantage for BYU at home. Jerem has dived into the analytics. I believe in the what SEC. They bring back. He, he likes I Arkansas. I believe in the SEC. I like you and Bacon. Ben Rector love Arkansas. He loves, is he from there? He went, graduated from Arkansas. Oh, did he? That's cool. <laughs> cool. Our question of the day. In order, what are the three toughest games on the 2022 BYU football schedule? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. First response in from Bernie Spears on Facebook. He says, Notre Dame, Baylor, and Arkansas. I'm guessing that's one, two, and three. It did not yep. signify numbers, but yeah. Notre Dame, Baylor, and Arkansas, one, two, three. I was tempted to include Oregon, but they're a Pac-12 team. So, again, fueling <laughs> my argument that the Pac-12 and Oregon will be ultra-motivated against BYU. Coming up, a Father's Day gift idea based on BYU upon And... The dual threat analyst, Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, gives us his rankings on BYU's toughest opponents in 2022. This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and South Jordan. crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. When I was about your age, I was sent to stay with my grandpa. Come on. Hello. Where did you come from? I have a good feeling about us. I think we're going to be best mates. Dogs don't sleep in the house. Hello, Mick. Please, call me Betty. Miss, Mum. Just Betty. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball team begins the West Coast Conference Tournament tonight. It's the four seed against five seed LMU. They got a win to advance to the double elimination portion. You can listen to the game at 10 Eastern tonight on BYU Radio and the BYU Radio app. We're hanging out live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan. Joining us now is a man who just threw for 487 yards, six touchdowns, ran for another. That based on his nose injury, right? Blaine Fowler is with us on BYU Play, Sports Playing Station. hurt today. Hey, man, respect to you for going out, balling out, man, and then hanging out with us after you got Those beat up a little bit. Those sixth graders could not hang with you. <laughs> you got Hey, you got to play hurt. That's the thing. Like, the, we always say, hey, you can play hurt. You just can't play injured. And I'm not injured. I'm just hurt. Okay. So it, that's it. So, now, so in all here. seriousness, what, what are you okay? Is your nose okay? Yeah, and I and – I, if, if I had any concussion, I put myself in concussion protocol. 
Um, and, and, but I, I cleared myself yesterday, so I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> one time, one time, who, who was it? Uh, there was a receiver in the NFL, Heinz Ward. He knew he had a yeah. concussion and he grabbed his ankle so that they wouldn't look at his head in oh the middle of the gosh. game. Yeah. That, that kind of stuff hey, Steve, uh, Steve wouldn't fly today. But uh, yeah. no, Steve Young put himself back in. The, Steve Young cleared himself from concussion protocol <laughs> when we were playing Ohio State in '82. I'm in the game. He he literally took the hardest hit I've ever seen anybody take from from Merrick and Cobb. They're two All-American backers. They had to take his ear pad out to get his helmet off because his nose was sticking out the ear hole. Oh, and no. I was like, this guy's out. He's out. Not maybe forever. He might be out. So I might be the guy now. I'm in for like a couple of plays, and he comes trotting back out. He's like, I'm in, I'm in, you're out. And I, I walked over the sideline and, and Holmgren says, what are you doing? And I go, well, Steve's in. He goes, the heck he is. He's not in. And I go, well, he's right out there. And then the, and he's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> so Steve cleared him. Steve cleared himself from concussion protocol and came back in a game where we were just getting murdered. It was terrible. Blaine, you're just constantly going in and then coming back out for Steve and, and Robbie. Did you, were you ever like, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to stay in here. Honestly, one time Robbie comes over the sideline, we're playing Utah State up in Logan, and it is sideways snowing. And and Robbie goes, I'm dude, my shoulder is not. And I go, Don't do not pull this crap on me right here. <laughs> I said, you, this this is a snow thing, isn't it? Like you want to do this, you say, Oh, my shoulder's not feeling good in San Diego. Don't do this to me in Logan in a blizzard. <laughs> and he's like, oh, no, dude, I'm I'm serious. It really doesn't feel good today. And so I played the rest of the game. Now, the good news was it was so slippery, they couldn't cover anybody. I just kept throwing, like, three-yard balls to Vice Sikahema and Lake Mbouli out of the backfield. I would just, like, push it with one hand over to them. They'd catch the ball, and then they'd run 17 yards, 20 yards, and we threw for a bunch of yards on them um, in the snow. So it wasn't as bad as it seemed. But I actually did question Robbie. I was like, come on, dude. Like, this day? <laughs> Classic playing this so yeah That's i did question funny. it once jerem that was the only time <laughs> <laughs> blaine fowler is with us on byu sports station fantastic stories about steve young and robbie bosco blaine we were real just... quick 12 of 20 170 yards yeah 12 of 20 170 there. nicely done blaine in a sideways snowy blizzard <laughs> just for the record by Hammer, like you said deserves a lot of credit there okay we've been talking yes. about yes the... The easiest to toughest path for BYU ranking all 12 opponents that way. Obviously, Utah Tech being the lone FCS team on BYU's schedule, we have it number 12. But then when you get towards the top, things can get very interesting. Jeremy and I differ on teams two through four. So, I mean, let's just start with you. Like, who are your top five toughest games that BYU will face in 2022? You You want me to start with five or you want me to start with one? You start with five. Let's build up to, uh, yeah, you know, drama. number one. I I have Boise State as my five. You agree with us. And, we have Boise yep, at number five. Yeah, yep. I, and, and, and the reason is because it's on the road. Um, they, they know that that series isn't continuing now. It's been a great rivalry. And by the way, huge respect to Boise State for the great partner they've been for BYU. They've been, they were the best partner BYU had during Independence, without question. So huge respect for them. And and with with Bachmeyer coming back and Halal, really young offensive line last year, those guys were all back. I just I just feel like there's a lot riding on that game. That's a tough game on the road, so I have them five. I've got them over Stanford and over Utah State. Yep. Yeah. South Florida, Liberty, yep. all those. I've got them five. All right, number um, four, Blaine. Four, I've got Arkansas. So I don't agree with Jerem. You agree with me? S E C. And 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 the reason is because it's. I realize they're SEC. They've got SEC athletes. Speed's always been an issue, but I don't feel like that's an issue for BYU anymore. Um, and so I think ma- they'll match up. I feel like them coming to elevation and playing on the road yes. is, is tougher than people think. And, and that's why um, I have them at four and not three or two. Okay. You and I agree. Number five and four. Okay. Who's number three for you? Three for me is Baylor. I think we might have an identical top five, Lane. Yeah, you guys do? Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. Three for me is Baylor. Um, they lose a lot. Otherwise, I might have had them too. Yeah. But they, they lose a lot of, on the uh, offensive line. They lose their entire secondary. Um, you know, their quarterback's back, sort of, because Bo- <laughs> the, the quarterback BYU played against is going to be in South Florida. But but the guy that played the, the back end of the season is back. 
I just, they're just so physical. And I think a little local knowledge with Grimes of how to manage being on the road here in Provo and all that um, makes a difference. So I got, I've got Baylor at three. And then I'm like you, Spencer, I've got Oregon at Oregon too. Um, first of all, it's a, it's a really difficult place to play. Oxen's a phenomenal stadium. I know Jeremy, you've been there, haven't you? Yeah. It's tremendous. Um, yeah. It's, and, and, and I, and they got a lot coming back. And then I think so the new head coach, if he can bring the, the discipline and physicality from Georgia, yeah. then, then that, that Georgia football team last year, I'm not kidding you guys. That's the best tackling football team I have ever seen in college football period mm. ever. That's, that's how, and so I'm just like, okay, if he can bring a semblance of that um, to what Oregon has coming back, and, you know, I look at – they're all over the board on the preseason polls because they are, but they're anywhere from number nine up to number 25. So people don't know what, what, quite what to make of them. I think on the road, at their place, with what they've got coming back, they're number two to me. And then and number one, we all agree, yeah. is Notre Dame because they're just loaded and they're, they're in almost everyone's preseason top, top ten. Um, it's a neutral game, which I never say in Vegas – for BYU, BYU is always the home team in Vegas, but not this time, guys. Yeah, Notre Dame's going to be the home nope. team. It's the only and have team more people there yeah. in the country that, including UNLV, that can have a home field advantage against BYU in Vegas, and that's Notre Dame. And so, so it'll be a great, great environment, sold out to the rafters. But I think that's the best team BYU plays this year, Notre Dame, without question. I love this list because it's absolutely wrong from all of us. <laughs> because when you go back, when you go back to last year, we would not have said at Baylor was the toughest game on the schedule, and then you could argue Boise State was the second toughest because BYU loses, right? You could say, well, it was there, it was Utah, and they overcame it and they won. But like we would not have said at Baylor. So who knows what that means? Does it mean that's actually Baylor again? Does it mean it's Arkansas? Is it clearly Notre Dame? I, I love this because when you play it out, it, it's always pretty different from what you actually thought was going to happen. Who, who's the sneaky one? Is at Stanford a sleeper that we're not valuing enough? That's the is thing. That the one I, I wonder, I wonder the if, they, if they're battling for bowl eligibility, let's say they're five and six. And I mean, they're going to be ultra motivated, like got to win six games, got to turn this thing around, got to get back after a, a really tough season. So that has me concerned a little bit. What about Utah State? They won 11 games. They're like, why aren't we higher? We won 11 games. Why, yeah, why and, not and, and Arkansas? At, why not Arkansas being the toughest With a chip game? on their shoulders? Yeah. I, you know, it's the one that I keep wondering about is, is Stanford. Are they going to be better than we think? Although I do think I'm predicting a BYU takeover of that state. Oh, that's um, 100% will happen. No doubt. Yeah, because they just they – just, when they had, you know, when, and, and you guys know, I'm a fan of Stanford because my son-in-law Dallas played there yeah. and they were in the top five when he played there. They were winning, you know, they were spanking Iowa in the Rose Bowl when he played there with, with Dallas as the defensive captain and Christian McCaffrey as the offensive captain. And we'd go over for games and the place was still like half full. It's Crazy. the library, so, Blaine, because yeah, it's so yeah. quiet, and, bro. And the kids, there were more people at the tailgate without question. Cause I think what happens is the students come to the tailgate and then they go back to the library. <laughs> they have homework. And, and so, so I, I think BYU is going to take that state, but Stanford's the one that I'm looking, cause they have athletes and it, it'll, it'll be interesting. That might be the one that we're underrating. Mm. And then the other one that worries me, I have a number eight on my, in, in my top 12 and in, in my 12 is South Florida at mm. South Florida. I think BYU is 100% healthy going into that, and it makes a difference. And BYU is going to be way ahead of most teams because of all the experience. But but I've been talking to the, the coaches as they're doing film, and they keep going, whoa, South Florida has athletes at every position on the field. They are way better than people think they are. And I have them at number eight because okay. I have them behind Stanford and Utah State along with the top five. But – maybe South Florida is better than we think we are. I mean, they're not going to, they're not better than the first three or four we picked, but maybe they should be, you know, five instead of eight, like I have them. So, so Stanford and South Florida, I don't know quite what to make of right at this point. Great stuff, Blaine. Let's give you some BYU sports nation karma to heal up, take care of that nose. And then uh, you can go back and dominate the neighborhood kids with your arm. Once again, <laughs> did you guys notice my custom bandage? Did you notice that? Can it's it's it hard to miss, Blaine. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's well played. I, I just want. I just represent Cougs no matter where I go, even on my nose. I love it, Blaine. Great to talk they, to you, man. They say play with your team on, on your on your sleeve. I play with them on my on nose. Your nose. So <laughs> see see you guys. All right, brother. Blaine Fowler, our dual threat analyst.
talking all football today. When he said South Florida, he was not talking about the Bulls. He was talking geographically, generally about the southern part of Florida. That's what was interesting to me. Come at number no, eight on his list. Okay. He weighs Come. a 12 and a half point favorite. Coming up, Mitch McIntyre on tonight's big BYU baseball game, the WCC tournament. And uh, what are your thoughts on a 10 a.m. kick time? Would you like that in Provo? Because there's a team in Utah that's dealing with that. And it ain't Utah. This is BYU Sports Nation. And it ain't Utah Tech. And it ain't Southern Utah. And- BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. And now, introducing your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So is this where we get the BYU card? But of course, the only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Hey family, if you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop entry, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with Jerem Jordan to interact with the show and get content throughout today. Follow us on all of the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. The NFL is looking at revamping or doing away with the Pro Bowl because I didn't even know the Pro Bowl was still going. Uh, should they look at the BYU alumni game as a template for the new look Pro Bowl? I wish it were that simple, <laughs> but it's just no. not. It, no. Like, as fun as the alumni game was for BYU TV and to have all those former players come back, that's, that's a thing for BYU. That totally is better than a spring game. You have to honor the actual Pro Bowlers somehow. I don't know if there can be like a series of competitions, skills, things like almost like an NBA All-Star weekend. Like there should be like a Pro Bowl weekend, which I think is a bunch of different competitions that are really fun, personality driven. That's how I would go about it. Sport doesn't lend itself to this as easy as baseball and hockey and basketball and stuff, which even the basketball All-Star game, I don't really like because I'm like, there's no defense. This is silly. Unless you're Kobe Bryant and you're, you know, breaking people's noses out of how competitive you are. So let's assume that Tom Brady's not in the Super Bowl and he's in the Pro Bowl. And you've got Tom Brady doing a target competition along with They've done whatever of your other favorite notable quarterback is at the Pro Bowl. But you do it on Sunday. Like, these these competitions are in primetime on Sunday and you're just watching them have fun. Oh, I observe the Sabbath. I don't know what. <laughs> There's not, I don't think there's really anything they can do to make it up. Jerem, the kick time for Utah State at Boise State on Black Friday was announced this morning. This is unbelievable. The two teams will kick at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Utah State had a home game last year, Timmy. On November 25th, it's going to be like 27 degrees, if that. Would you ever want a 10 a.m. kickoff at Lavelle Edwards Stadium? No, I don't think so. Unless it was like, hey, we're putting it on ABC and it's against Oklahoma in 2024. Then I'd be like, whatever you say. 
There is only but 10 a.m. is like the minimum ever. There is only one game that I can think of ever in the history of BYU football that I would be like, I wish we played that game at 10 a.m. It was Portland State in 2017. Oh, because, because it was hot. so hot. Martin McLean had like heat stroke. Yes, it was on the so field. hot. Yeah. Like, FCS in late August? Sure, play at 10 a.m. Live on BYU TV. BYU TV Sports released the football schedule as scented candles yesterday. What was your favorite scent? Ah, uh, Mihatis. I like the scurvy representing East Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Cougar candles. Mine was bacon for Arkansas. Other notables, Stanford, pine tree. Utah Tech, dirt. Boise State, Boise potato. Liberty, burnt poultry. Ooh. Notre Dame, shamrock shake, yep. of course. Makes total Utah sense. State, manure. I like the essence of Tom Brady. I think that's very clever. Wyoming Tumbleweed, Oregon Duck Pond, and Baylor Magnolia Farms. Ah, you can't beat the scurvy. Which is the worst smelling one? Clearly manure with Utah <laughs> yes. State, right? Then what does scurvy smell like? It can't be good. <laughs> it's got like, like rotting teeth. Jack, jacked up pirate teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about what, like, what uh, decaying teeth smell like <laughs> till scurvy. today. Like I'm just thinking about that line from... Pirates of the Caribbean. Which when, one? When they find, uh, what's her real name? Elizabeth is the character in the movie. Kira Knightley? Kira Knightley, thank you. And they go, hello, puppy. Hello. Yeah, puppet. I'm just like, scurvy. <laughs> scurvy sounds amazing. You know what else sounds amazing? Yeah. A postseason play rise and shout Indeed out. it does. Transition. BYU Baseball's Mitch McIntyre joins us on postseason game day. Win and your season continues. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this or this and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Coming up Friday, a BYU Sports Nation special as we present Deep Blue Volume 6. Tune in and relive the Deep Blue stories of Husseini Trout Traore. It's been a minute. Tiki Ali, Tiki, Trey Stewart, and Gideon George. That's Friday at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live on Wednesday, May 25th. All night. It is postseason game day for BYU baseball. And to help us set the tone for that properly is none other than senior star center fielder Mitch McIntyre. You're the renaissance man, Mitch. I, mean, I could introduce you as a pitcher, too. Like, I feel like you've played a bunch of different positions for BYU baseball. But uh, are you okay with center fielder? Yeah, I'd say that's a good uh, title for me, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm appreciate a, that. I'm a Mr. <laughs> SC Top Ten. You, you made some incredible catches the last couple of weeks. What's it been like to, uh, to shine in that spot where you're always ready to go? 
man, I don't know. I mean, some of those catches even shocked me, but um, no, I'm just happy. Um, trust my teammates to, you know, make good pitches. And then when they hit it to me, I just try to, you know, go up there and catch it. So try to make it simple, I guess. Would you rather hit a home run or make like a sprawling diving catch in center field? Ooh, that's a hard one. I mean, since I pretty much don't have a home run this year, I'd definitely say home run right okay. now. Uh, uh, well, can get I, any of that if I can get it. Yeah. Let's but, go early. Um, early karma boost to you to get a home run in the WCC go, tournament. BYU Sports let's go, right? Karma. Yeah, I love that. Just no, I totally. I think they got a right uh, short porch in right field. Okay. Too, so let's just knows? call it New Yankee we Stadium. Love that, right? Just yeah, right field. Yes. That, I love when when someone hits a home run that super shallow right field, and they go, "This only would have been a home run in this stadium." Which is just crazy. So, yeah, in Stockton. Okay, you're playing LMU. It's a playing game to the double elimination uh, portion. So it's, it's fun to have that sort of pressure, but also like, hey, we got to win to advance, right? So how are you guys handling that and against a team you just played three times? I know it's kind of funny that we literally just finished our series with them. Um, but, no, I'm excited. Um, we didn't have our starter that's starting tonight, Jack Sterner, um, for the series. And so – it's kind of funny. I feel like that's a really good thing to have just because they haven't seen him. So, um, man, we're feeling confident, especially seeing them and just seeing their level of play and, um, yeah, seeing, you know, what we can do. And so I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited, ready we, to get after it. Sure, yeah. Again, having won 11 of 13, you bring in some serious mojo and great momentum. That said, you lose to LMU 17-7 to on Saturday, and I had a few BYU fans say, Spencer, you're – they just beat BYU by 10 runs. Are you worried about this matchup? And I said, listen, baseball is an interesting sport. You rest a bunch of guys. You get ready for the tournament. How would you answer the concerns of any BYU fan that's worried about what LMU did to BYU on Saturday? No, yeah, totally. I mean, baseball's kind of uh, crazy how it can do that. But we kind of did something different this weekend and um, didn't, I mean, have Jack start. And so it kind of, was different with our pitching staff, but, um, but I mean, no, I'm, I'm excited for this weekend. I think hopefully maybe we just wasted all of their hits so they don't get any today <laughs> and, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get all the hits. So, um, I'm thinking, I'm hoping it's going to go that way and I'm feeling pretty confident. So they used all the runs, all the hits. Exactly. And, uh, right? Yeah. It'll be crazy. <laughs> This tournament is a war of attrition with, with pitching um, because if you, if you guys successfully navigate this and win this tournament and go to the NCAA tournament, you will have used every pitcher probably, including yourself. So what's it like going into a tournament knowing, yes, we, we, we want to be here for the long haul, but we've got to win this game at all costs just to get to the next game? Yeah, no, I mean, we de yeah, definitely. We're going to have to use all the stars that we got. Um, but, I mean, our pitching staff is really, really great. I think they got the lowest ERA in all the WCC. But, um, but I mean, yeah, man, they're studs. And uh, so I trust them out there. And I feel like we've got a really good defense. This is probably the closest team I've ever played with. Um, and so I think we're all just for each other and playing good baseball right now. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Mitch McIntyre of BYU Baseball is with us on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars open up West Coast Conference postseason play tonight. Single elimination game against LMU. If they win, they're into the double elimination format with the top four teams. Uh, Mitch, we should congratulate you again on a third straight year receiving West Coast Conference postseason honors. And just so you know, you are BYU top 10 in career statistics in the following categories. 10th uh, in at-bats, 8th doubles, 4th in walks, 4th in games played overall, and number one in being hit by pitches. Are you proud of that statistic? It's funny because, honestly, if there was a statistic to be for me, it would probably be that, hit by pitches. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it just correlates in a weird way. But, um, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Uh, who knows? People will either wanted to hit at me or, or throw at me, I guess, or <laughs> – I don't know, but I guess, you know, getting on base is what I pretty much try to do. So I guess that worked out. <laughs> yes, get on base. That's the point, right? How much uh, sort of skill is involved versus you just got hit? Um, I'd probably say it's more just got hit. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I should have got out of the way on some of them, but <laughs> I think it shocked me more that I just – it just hit me, you know. <laughs> Have you become numb to the pain? Like, is your body just used to it? 
it's funny because they say, you know, once you get down to first, it's the pain's supposed to be away and you're supposed to be fine. But sometimes it's not that way. It's still, it still rattles for a while. So someone who's yeah. never been hit by a pitch said that, right? Like there's, <laughs> yeah, like, right. Totally. Like someone like me, uh, you know, someone, someone who would say like that. Okay. So go, the, talk about the mindset going into this tournament because you guys have won nine of 10 in league, 11 of tw- uh, 13 overall. You guys are hot right now. How do you keep that mojo going in a tournament that you need to win to uh, go to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a fun time to play with these guys right now because um, I think things are starting to click and we're starting to kind of really get hot. And I feel like that's pretty much what all that matters in, in baseball. I mean, when I went to the tournament three years ago, we were having a great year. And, and sadly, I think we went two and out um, and just kind of didn't get that hot at the right time and so i think this year it's kind of different in that ways we're starting to get there and get hot and so man i think we're just excited to be still playing with each other and um you know everybody's kind of starting to click and and getting their rhythm and so i think you know tonight's going to be a good one and you know i think we're going to be here for the rest of the week so mitch let's take a wide angle lens here how are you different as a player compared to the last time you were playing in Stockton in the West Coast Conference Tournament compared to today on May 25th of 2022? Man, um, I don't know. Probably experience, I guess, when you've been here half a decade um, and, and get to play you know, college baseball for that long. Um, you pick up on things. And I think, you know, just mostly understanding who I am and um, using my speed or just any way I can get on um, on the base path to, you know, put the next man up and score me. Um, so I think just realizing my strengths and trying to play more to them and rather trying to hit the long ball every time and usually not working out. So, um, but yeah. Chicks dig the long ball though, Mitch, right? Still? I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm hoping that maybe they did the, you know, diving catches in the outfield. Or yeah, oh yeah. Like, yeah. Like you know what too, they really but... love now that I heard hit by pitch. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I could tell them nobody's been hit by a pitch more than me. So. <laughs> Are you the guy who's you're, number one? In you're the tough history? guy. You got the, you got the, you're the <laughs> you number one more ranked than man card guy on Wally the team. Wally Joyner and Corey Snyder and, and all these guys. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, well, let's uh, give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. Good luck tonight. Uh, 10 Eastern on BYU Radio. And uh, we expect a, a fun tournament. Good luck. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. You got it. Thanks, appreciate Mitch. It. Mitch McIntyre, BYU Baseball, hanging out with us on BYU Sports Nation. Dude, he he's, he's awesome. He's he great, is great player. Great such, player. such a great player. And I know he kind of was giving himself a hard time about, you know, not having a home run this year. He absolutely has the power to do that. Yeah, talk about, you know, f- is he a five-tool player? Mitch is very close to that, Jeremy. Everybody's got to roll. Very you close. Everybody doesn't need to hit homers. Like, get on base, play great defense, prevent runs. Like, he does so yes. many things well. Yes, and defensively he had so much. And then his versatility as a pitcher, if he needed to, is pretty awesome. Okay, coming up, are you getting to la- today's Elite Voice today? Like, you right there? And uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and double down on this whole karma thing for the teams getting ready to compete in the postseason with some rise and shout outs. This is BYU Sports Nation. Oh, we about to shout all right. Let's go. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. 
Wow. Awesome. So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> With a free BYU TV app. I like it. Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. Very capable and very big-hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this. I mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast, just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, rate, and review, please. Our question of the day, in order, what are the three toughest games on the 2022 BYU football schedule? Greg Welch on Twitter answers. What's up, Greg? Notre Dame number one. Arkansas number two, at Oregon number three, My man. Taylor fourth. My man. Oh, fitting that Greg and Jerem, who uh, corroborate often on social media, would we agree do? on the same four teams. Just because we interact, we corroborate? <laughs> you corroborate with the people you interact with regularly? No, never. <gasps> Who's going to pay for my surgery, Rod? <laughs> you? No. Our elite voice of the day, presented uh, by <laughs> Sundance Mountain Resort from at WD Heath 40. Toughest games. College football playoff semifinal. <laughs> Blue goggle alert. Number one. Blue goggle Number two, alert. the national Blue championship game. Alert. Wait, Blue goggle the semifinal is harder than the national championship game? Because you have to go through Alabama. Okay. Notre Dame, number three. I imagine the committee wouldn't give BYU any better than fourth, so BYU would play the number one seed in the semis. Yeah, play Alabama. <laughs> exactly. That's, That's yes. very well thought out. Well cogitated, as we like to say <laughs> on this program. <laughs> Uh, today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Good luck to track and field in the NCAA regionals or preliminaries in Arkansas, ironically enough. A lot of conversation about mm -hmm. the uh, Razorbacks. And of course, baseball in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Got to keep the season going. You lose and you're done. You win. You got to keep going. And BYU's got to win that tournament to go to the NCAA regionals. That would be an incredible run. They did do that. Yes. 2017. Yes. Don't forget. Well, and I know some of you are like, hey, what about golf? They don't start playing until tomorrow. Also, okay. why are you yelling? It's okay. What about Look at the, the golf karma's on the way. Yeah. I miss doing clapping, clapping yes. in the headlines. And the, and the cougar whip round? Back. Yeah. Men's golf. Our thanks to today's ah! guest, Blaine Fowler. And Mitch McIntyre, BYU Baseball. Sorry to Dennis, ran out of uh, time, although uh, if you ran into a glass window and busted your nose, you know, maybe you'd have Ouch. a Band-Aid like that. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Marv Allen. We'll see you tomorrow for BYU Sports Nation. The karma's real, baby. Time for Mitch to use it. Go Marv, you say.